What's going on, everybody? It's CTA Prime back here again. Today, I got a chance to test out the all-new Panther Lake CPU lineup from Intel. And this thing is actually putting down some really good performance. The test bed I was able to use here is a Lenovo reference laptop. So it might not be the exact design that we see, you know, hit the market. But the CPU I was able to test here was something that we will see in a bunch of different laptops. And Intel even stated that they're working on a dedicated handheld version of the new Core Ultra 300 series CPU. And that's something I'm super excited to see down the road. But what I've got here is the new Intel Core Ultra x 9 h 16 cores, 16 threads. This unit here, given that it's a reference laptop, had 64 gigabytes of RAM running at 9,600 megatransfers per second. And of course, when it comes to the new Intel Arc i GPU, it's the B390. With these tests here, Intel allowed me to do this kind of all by myself. They weren't over my shoulders seeing exactly what I was doing. There were a few things. I wasn't able to run any CPU benchmarks right now, but I'm really excited about these chipsets specifically for gaming on an iGPU and thin and light laptops like the one we have here. The first thing I wanted to show off here was Spider-Man 2. And with this, I'm actually at 1200p high settings with XESS set to quality. No frame generation is enabled with this test here. And again, we're at high with Spider-Man 2, which has kind of been a problematic game on iGPUs across the board. So just to show you here, we're actually gonna swap it over to balanced, which it still looks great at 1200p. And before I get back into the game, we'll enable that FPS counter. And you can see we're over 70 FPS with this one. And this is not using frame generation, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. The next game I was able to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. And before we get into it, I do want to show you what we've got. So this is a watt meter coming from the wall. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to use like hardware info to get a correct reading, but it does look like the TDP on this setup was at 65 watts. So we're not quite drawing 65 watts, even running Cyberpunk like this. I've got it locked at 60 because I wanted to see exactly what it would do here. Now, the cool thing about this is right now we're actually at ultra settings with XESS set to balanced. This is pretty awesome. And again, we're not using frame generation with this game either. If it's something you wanted to enable, you could definitely up that frame rate quite a bit. One thing I'm super excited about is the multi-frame generation up to X4. I will be getting my hands on one of these very shortly so I can make more videos. I'm still at CES right now. So keep an eye on the channel because there's a lot that I want to test with this new chipset. It's not going to be a reference laptop like we have here, but it'll be a very similar chip with this new iGPU. I also had access to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so I just used the built-in benchmark here. 1200p high settings, no XESS, no FSR. So we're at 100% resolution scale. I'm not even using Fidelity CAS. At the end of the benchmark, at high settings, 1200p here, we had an average of 74 FPS. And this is all stuff I will be comparing to other iGPUs on the market in a future video, so keep an eye out. But the final game I was able to test was Doom the Dark Ages, and this actually ran absolutely amazingly. I am using XESS. We're set to balance there, 1200p medium settings. And if you've tried to run this on any iGPU, you know, going down the low or even that handheld preset is definitely the way to go. At medium, we're seeing an average of around 87 FPS. And if I take it up to high, we're going to be seeing an average of around 72. We do have more than enough VRAM here with a laptop like this because, because it's going to use system memory as our VRAM. We've got 64 gigs to work with. And from the new Intel graphics control, you can manually set that if you want to, or you can just let it allocate as much as it needs by itself. So this is one of those games that does use a lot of VRAM, but we've got more than enough. And at medium settings, I mean, this is a really great experience. And it looked absolutely amazing. So again, I will have more videos coming up on Panther Lake. We're going to test everything that we can from CPU performance, more iGPU performance. We'll test out thermals, battery life, even AI performance. But until then, I was super excited about what I've been able to test so far. And I think Intel is definitely on the right track. That's going to wrap it up for this one. As soon as I get back from CES, I'll have more videos. And like always, thanks for watching.